KC7 Bangor. This is ABC7 News at Noon. Testimony is expected to resume this week in the trial of Jessica Williams. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. Some local roads were heavily damaged and became inaccessible because of rain over the weekend. We've got the details. And despite the rain, students at the University of Maine held a march to raise awareness of domestic violence. Thank you for joining us. More on these and other stories in just a moment. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? Hey Susan, happy Monday afternoon. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Luigi and Fredericks across from Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. The fog's starting to go away. Things starting to look a lot better. This is from earlier this morning. Some areas saw near zero visibility, so some decent fog that developed out there this morning. The dense fog advisory was dropped at 10 a.m., so things starting to look better there now with the fog starting to clear out. But now I have to watch for some flooding issues as well with aerial flood watches that are in effect and this will last until about 8 a.m. on Wednesday as we'll have to deal with some of the heavier rainfall in just a few spots. Let's we'll zoom things out and give you the bigger picture right now. We're going to be watching for some rain showers that will be developing soon but for now we're looking pretty good. Anything that developed last night is pretty much gone. We're dry with a few passing clouds and the fog that's now cleared up but again this next system right here from the west going toward the east will begin to move in giving us more rain showers on the way later on this week. But meanwhile though increasing clouds stay slightly chance for a rain shower can be ruled out. The better opportunities will occur early Tuesday morning and some heavy downpours again are possible. But again, the winds aren't going to be a huge deal today, but by tomorrow they really begin to increase with some gusts. Again, I'll get up to around 25 miles per hour in a few areas. Forecast for today, lower 60s increasing clouds, isolated chance for a rain shower. Southeast wind getting up to about 5 to 10 miles per hour. And then our early forecast for the rest of the afternoon period, mostly cloudy, slight chance for a rain shower. Temperatures in the lower 60s. Your full five-day forecast it's coming up. Susan? Thank you, Devin. Crews are still on the scene of a fire on Main Street in Stockton Springs at this hour. Fire crews were called to a multi-family home on Main Street earlier this morning. Stockton Springs Fire Chief Vern Thompson says the fire included the second and third floors and believed the origin of the fire was caused by an electrical problem. The crews were able to contain and knock down the fire quickly. Firefighters credit the tenants for quick thinking and calling 911 to get crews on site as fast as possible. All the tenants were able to exit the building safely. Surrounding fire departments were called in along with the Red Cross to help the occupants of the home. Testimony resumed this morning in the trial of Jessica Williams. Williams, who also goes by the name Jessica Trefevin, is accused of murder for the death of her three-year-old son. The Belfast trial was delayed for one week after one of the defense attorney, uh, the prosecution attorneys tested positive for COVID. Authorities say the little boy was living with his mother in Stockton Springs when he died from numerous injuries. The Augusta Police Department continues to investigate an alleged armed bank robbery. It took place Saturday morning at Camden National Bank on Armory Street. Officials say a masked man walked into the bank around 11.30 a.m. and pulled out a handgun. He then fled on foot. Sergeant Anthony Druin says the suspect is still at large but says there is no threat to the public. A major washout over the weekend in Glenburn has left a portion of a main road inaccessible. According to the Glenburn Fire Department, addresses up to 1171 Pushaw Road, which is just north of the Orono Road, can be accessed from Bangor. Anything higher than that is only accessible by a detour from the Hudson Road. Heavy rain fell Friday night into Saturday morning, causing the washout. According to the Department of Transportation, the road is still in need of repairs, and those repairs are estimated to take two weeks. And another washout in Lincoln. The Enfield Road around the area of Thompson's Trucking is in the process of being repaired and reopened. The road caved in due to the washout, which will require motorists to seek an alternate route until crews finish the repair. Road crews will be paving a couple of streets in Bangor today. They'll be resurfacing a portion of Howard Street from Mount Hope down to Juniper Street. They'll also be paving Grove Street from Stillwater Avenue down to Milford Street. Officials say there will be no parking allowed while the crews are conducting their work. Flaggers will be in place, but drivers may want to avoid that area to avoid delays. Governor Janet Mills hit the road to show support for local businesses on Friday. Devin Dagnold has more.
Governor Janet Mills was in Belfast and Bucksport visiting businesses that have prospered by different programs during her administration. In Belfast, the governor visited Front Street Shipyard, a premier international boat building and servicing facility. The governor toured the facility and was shown a demonstration of Shipyard's 3D water jet cutting machine, which, according to the governor, was purchased with the help of a grant from the main DOT. Well, we, we bought the machine initially as uh, part of our what we hope to do is build carbon fiber ferries. But in the meantime, we have this machine that is a five-axis machine. It operates at 90,000 PSI, for cutting most any material except for tempered glass and diamond. In Bucksport, the governor made stops at the Greenhead Lobster Packaging Plant and the Pemiquid Mussel Farm, both of which benefited from the governor's seafood dealer and processing program. These funds from the program were invested in new technology to help streamline their packaging and shipping. One of the things that we did was we added an inspection belt to our, our bagging line here, um, which will make it more efficient. And then also we purchased some machinery where we can separate the meats from the shells. So we're really excited about that because it, it'll double the employment hours and it will also double the value that we get out of our mussels that we farm. According to John Steves, the plant manager of Greenhead Lobster Packaging, the plant plans on using the funds to make upgrades and become one of the leaders of lobster packaging. Um, we're building a, a state-of-the-art system here, so we're the template for uh, the new lobster industry. In Belfast and Bucksport, I'm Devin Dagnall, reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. UMaine hosted its ninth annual March Against Domestic Violence Friday. We spoke to organizers and students who decided to march for a critical cause. Rain or shine, A.J. Douglas has the details. It's a huge problem, but it's hidden. It happens behind closed doors, so nobody knows. Dozens of students from the University of Maine and Orono decided to continue the annual March Against Domestic Violence. Despite Friday's rain, student and faculty organizers from the Maine Business School spoke about why student engagement surrounding this issue prepares victims to seek help. In all of our communities, it's important, but especially in our campus community, um, most people um, will experience some form of domestic violence. If people learn about this and then they can kind of spot the signs like, oh, sh you know, my friend, there's something wrong. Dr. Nori Jones is a professor for the School of Business at the University of Maine. She mentioned the several partnerships that helped to bring the community event to campus. We work collaboratively with um, the Army ROTC on campus, the athletic department, we are the MBS Corps, we work, work with Student Life, with Title IX, with Partners for Peace, and many more groups just to increase awareness. Organizers say events like this give students the opportunity to form bonds and show solidarity to stamp out domestic violence on college campuses nationwide. For me it's been a great way to connect with other people and to help with our mission, which is growing and strengthening our local community and our UMaine campus communities. Anyone experiencing abuse or violence can reach out to Partners for Peace by dialing 1-800-863-9909. In Orono, A.J. Douglas, ABC7, Fox 22. Coming up on ABC7 News at noon, a school in Maine is offering a first-of-its-kind cannabis degree. We'll have the details when we return. If you're a Medicare beneficiary and live in the area, call now to see how this little card could get you some big benefits, including money added back to your Social Security check. With one toll-free call, you can find out how easy it is to get all of your original Medicare coverage, plus extra benefits. You get an all-in-one plan designed to fit your needs so you can be your best every day. You could have medical coverage, prescription drugs with $0 generics, dental, vision and hearing, plus the WellCare Visa Flex Card, money for over-the-counter items, and money back in your Social Security check each month, and so much more. And here's more good news. You can get a WellCare plan for a $0 monthly premium. How can WellCare offer all of those benefits for a $0 monthly premium? It's simple. Medicare Advantage and Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage are important parts of Medicare. WellCare has a contract with Medicare to offer and provide these important options to you. 
Call right now to get your free copy of the Well Care All-in-One Guide. Call 1-877-282-3827 now. There is absolutely no obligation for requesting this free information. WellCare offers benefits that go beyond the basics, including money added to your Social Security check to help cover your Part B premium. Call today to get your free copy of the All-in-One Guide with absolutely no obligation. Your free plan guide will give you the details you need to make a smart choice for your Medicare coverage. Just call 1-877-282-3827. Remember, there's no obligation for requesting this free information. So call 1-877-282-3827. Well care. Call today. If you've been hurt in a car accident, watch out. Watch out. The insurance company may try to tell you that you don't need a lawyer. Watch out. The insurance company may try to settle before you're done with all your medical treatments. Don't trust that insurance company after your accident. You could miss out on a lot of money. Call the twos and we'll watch out for you. Lowry & Associates watched out for me and got me $275,000. Call the twos. We win for you. If you're hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call 2 2 2 22 22 you're watching ABC7 Bangor. Yale University is offering a degree in an unlikely industry. Matthew Jaroncic has more. Starting next spring, Beale University in Bangor will be offering an associate's and bachelor's degree in cannabis studies. Program coordinator Sarah Taylor said it's important that people better understand the industry. There was kind of a need for education for people to be able to work um, in the cannabis industry. Taylor says the program will offer two associate's degrees in business administration and cannabis sciences and a bachelor's degree in medicinal plant sciences. And with the growth the industry has seen, Beale University Director of Career Services Robin Tardif says the university is capitalizing on the current trends. According to Leafly, um, we actually are seeing roughly 280 new jobs uh, appear each day. Uh, so it's it really is just, it's a growing industry. Taylor says the programs will focus on all aspects of the cannabis industry. Well, the business administration program ha is going to have technical information regarding cultivation operations and dispensary operations, as well as tax and legal regulations around cannabis. This program will be taught in an asynchronous format where students can work at their own pace as long as they hit the course's necessary deadlines. Even though similar courses are taught around the United States, Beale University senior admissions representative Amber Gray says nothing compares to Beale's program. There really aren't any like us. I mean, a lot of courses are given in different states that are similar, but they don't offer the college degree. They have um, diplomas or certificate programs, but they don't have the actual true college degree after you graduate. Despite there being many stereotypes and stigmas surrounding the cannabis industry, Teredith believes that investing in education will change negative perceptions. You know, a lot of these classes are very science heavily based. You're taking micros and you're taking uh, a lot of science based courses that, that aren't easy. We're moving away from the average person who just enjoys to smoke cannabis uh, to turning that into a profession. General Manager of Brothers Cannabis on Broadway, Matthew Jellison, says he supports cannabis education. We feel that anything that's going to kind of propel the cannabis industry and remove the stigma, we feel a program like this is only going to enhance that and, and make it even more uniform throughout the state. Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22. A new factory is adding some flavor to the town of Winslow. Devin Dagnold has that story. It was shocking. We had other people around us who are like, what is it about Maine? And I'm like, come to Maine and you'll find out. We love our adopted home here. These are Maine Crisps, a gluten-free cracker company based out of Maine that's been steadily expanding over the past few years, but most recently opened its newest location here in Winslow. Eight years ago, starting out of her home kitchen in Waterville, Karen Getz began her small business, Maine Crisp. Her goal? To make gluten-free crackers that are as healthy as they are tasty. What I had noticed, um, many of the gluten-free products on the market weren't that healthy as far as extra sugar, extra salt, lots of starches, and buckwheat being naturally gluten-free, you know, could I bake with this and create something that is truly healthy 
and that people would still enjoy. So I'm proud to say that we've won awards. We have um, customers that do not have to eat gluten-free, but love them. Getz says she plans to continue the growth of the company and hopes that Maine Crisp will be able to hire more employees in the years to come. In the meantime, Getz says that the factory will help bring some new attention to the town of Winslow. So I think we'll have a positive impact on the community as far as, you know, the people that we hire, um, letting people know more about Central Maine and what's what great food things are going on in Central Maine. And um, yeah, I think I think it definitely will be positive. If you're interested in trying any Maine Crisp products, look no further than your local Hannaford. There are currently four flavors available, with a fifth due to release next month. In Winslow, I'm Devin Dagnall, reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. Spooky season is here. If you're wondering why people have such a fascination with the paranormal, Fox's Ashley Strohmeyer takes a closer look. With Halloween almost here, people are busy putting up decorations and binging scary movies. <laughs> but why are so many of us interested with the idea of paranormal activity? Glenn Sparks, communications professor at Purdue University, says people's curiosity peaks when they encounter things they can't comprehend or elements science can't explain. We don't really understand things like that. And when the media depict those things in a way as if it's real, uh, people are fascinated by it because they entertain the <clears throat> idea that maybe something like that could really exist. According to Sparks, the popularity of shows and movies with paranormal themes took off more than 30 years ago. And since then, Americans have only wanted more. Back in the 80s, there was a writer's strike and Hollywood discovered that they could put a microphone in front of somebody and get them to narrate a paranormal story and uh, people watched it. Hollywood has uh, relied uh, more consistently with paranormal themes, an appetite has been cultivated for this kind of entertainment. A survey last year from YouGov found roughly 41% of Americans said they believe in ghosts. But for the non-believers, Spark says this is what could help change their minds. If you have a UFO depiction, let's say, and there's a scientist who says, well, you know what, uh, UFOs could actually happen, they could occur, and maybe we have been visited by aliens, people are much more likely than after they see a program like that to endorse belief in spaceships. Same thing with haunted houses and ghosts. The National Retail Federation says nearly 70% of people will celebrate Halloween this year. Ashley Strohmeyer, Fox News. After the break, we'll take a look at a leading cause of death that's all around us, but it's frequently overlooked. We'll take a look at what it is when we come back. I have a great job. I get up early, head on out, and I get to work. I install solar panels. They power our homes and give me a great paycheck. When Paul LePage was governor, he opposed projects like this, putting Maine last for solar jobs in New England. He even said that climate change wasn't a threat to Maine. Look, we need more of these jobs, and that won't happen if we go back to Paul LePage. The top funder of Better Maine is the Democratic Governors Association. You work the night shift, take the extra shift, wake up before dawn, and every paycheck you pay into Medicare and Social Security to fund the retirement you deserve. Bruce Poliquin voted to cut Medicare and put Social Security benefits at risk. He even wants to raise the retirement age. Pretty rich coming from a millionaire politician who's never had to pull an extra shift. Moderate Pack is responsible for the content of this ad. I'm Phil Levesque. President of Levesque Business Solutions. We're a family-owned main business since 1963. We're your one-stop shop for great office products at affordable rates. From copiers to office furniture to PPE, we've got it all warehoused right here in Bangor. We're your local small main business with a dedicated staff providing honest and friendly customer service, top-of-the-line tech support, and the option of in-house leasing. Let us help you get back to business. Seniors know a scam when they see one, like Bruce Poliquin. My heart is breaking for our seniors in Maine. He says he'll help Maine seniors. But the last time Poliquin was in Congress, he voted to cut $500 billion from Medicare. And he supports raising the retirement age for Social Security. Maine seniors can trust Jared Golden. Jared stood up to both parties to protect Social Security and Medicare. I'm Jared Golden, and I approve this message because Maine seniors earned their retirement. 
Feel the difference of alpaca apparel from the Blue Alpaca Ranch and Store in Belfast. Stop by their ranch location to interact with these amazing animals and enjoy the beautiful main outdoors with your very own alpaca walk. Shop in-store or online today and take advantage of their free nationwide shipping. With their incredible selection of socks, sweaters, hats, and more, experience the unique qualities that alpaca fiber brings with the Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. Pollution is a losing cause of death and often gets overlooked. A new study shows that 9 million deaths can be attributed to worsening air quality and heavy metal contamination. ABC's Justin Finch has more. A study led by an international team of scientists finds pollution contributed to upwards of 9 million deaths in 2019, equivalent to one out of every six deaths worldwide. The number of water pollution related deaths improved from 2015 to 2019, but the number of air pollution related deaths increased as well. Heavy metal and lead pollution rates also rose. The study found men were more likely to die from air pollution than women or children, while women and children more likely to be affected by water pollution. Researchers noted there's a greater impact of pollution on human health than malaria, tuberculosis, HIV, drugs or alcohol. And pollution is still the number one environmental risk for disease and mortality. To lower these numbers, researchers are calling for improvements to climate change, among other measures. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch, ABC News. Now let's take a look at some of the positive stories making headlines today. The National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. has reopened to the public. The museum was closed for eight months as part of a $1 billion renovation project. There are eight new galleries to expand storytelling and offer more immersive experiences that include interactive and digital media. A woman from Staten Island is praising some New York City sanitation workers. She wrapped her favorite ring in a napkin and accidentally tossed it out in the trash. She found the truck that had picked up her garbage and they made their way to a transfer station where sanitation worker Pete Morrow was among those who helped search through the bags of trash to reunite Jackie with her ring. And mariachi bands, along a staple of Mexican culture, are now being used to reawaken memories of Alzheimer's patients. The therapy is being promoted by the Mexican Alzheimer's Center, which hopes the music will stir up recollections of times past among patients, encouraging them to sing or even dance to familiar old tunes. I'm Emma Smith, and these are some of the upbeat, positive stories making headlines today. We return. Devin Biggs has your five-day forecast. Joe Biden is crushing Maine. And who does Jared Golden support? Golden's backing Biden. Jared Golden said Joe Biden has leadership that the country needs right now. Higher taxes, record inflation, and still. Golden's backing Biden. In D.C., Joe Biden relies on Jared Golden's votes. President Joe Biden, I'm asking you to vote for Jared Golden. Jared Golden says he's independent, but anytime it matters, Golden's, Golden's backing, backing Biden. Biden. I'm Bruce Poliquin, and I approve this message. I'm Jim with Lowry & Associates. Winning car accident cases is what we do. Check out a few of our big wins. I broke my wrist and they got me $185,000. What did the twos do for you? I injured my hip and they got me $260,000. What did the twos do for you? I needed multiple surgeries and Lowry & Associates got me $350,000. Call the twos. We win for you. If you hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call 222-22. Does your plug-in fade too fast? Try Febreze Fade Defy Plug. It has built-in technology to digitally control how much scent is released to smell first day fresh for 50 days. La, 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 la. Better skin from your body wash? Try Olay Body Wash with skincare super ingredient collagen. Olay Body Wash hydrates for healthier looking skin in just 14 days. From dry and dull to firm and radiant. With Olay Body, I feel fearless in my skin. Your representative has your back. 
Who's he kidding? Jared Golden votes with Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden 83% of the time. The result? A war in the middle class. The worst inflation in 40 years. Sky-high energy prices. Drugs pouring over the border. And Jared Golden just voted for 87,000 new IRS agents to hassle the middle class. Jared Golden doesn't have your back. He has theirs. The NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Welcome back. Let's check your full forecast with Devin Biggs. Devin? Alrighty, happy Monday afternoon. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices. With locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. Fog was the theme this morning. It was very widespread earlier, but by mid-morning, it was starting to back off or it was just the western parts of the area. But now things are starting to look really good. The dense fog advisory that was up got dropped at 10 a.m., so things are improving. We just had some clouds starting to move in ahead of our next system. These are aerial flood watches in effect until 8 a.m. as we head towards your Wednesday. This is courtesy of some heavy downpours that will be on the way, though, as we watch another system that does begin to move in. But for now, though, there's some clouds approaching from the west and a little bit from the south and west as well. There's going to be more where this came from with this area of low pressure right here that will continue to track off towards the east with some heavy downpours once again on the way. So here we are though. Gusty winds will be on the way and some of those tomorrow could get pretty high. Today not as bad, maybe up to 10 miles per hour. Tomorrow we could be talking about some gusts that could reach up to 25, maybe even 30 miles per hour in a few areas as that system begins to move in. Wind price increasing to 3 to 4 feet. No small craft advisories in effect along the coast at this point. So overall, we're looking pretty decent, though the winds won't be as bad as with our last system. Our average high is 58 degrees. We'll reach for the lower 60s today and tomorrow. With the upper 50s Wednesday, middle 50s Thursday and a Friday, then back in the lower to middle 60s as we head towards your Saturday and also into your Sunday. Latest fall foliage report. This was from last week before all the rainfall moved in, so we might see this advancing a lot later this week, going from maybe at peak to maybe even past peak. We'll have to see a new update will be coming out later on this week. But future cast moving forward, though, any fog developing is getting out of here, increasing clouds on the way later on today. By tonight, rain showers move in by early tomorrow morning with plenty of rainfall, too. I think future cast here maybe even be underdoing it but still some heavy downpours on the way kind of a similar idea compared to the last system that began to move in even through parts of tuesday evening some heavy down heavy downpours are possible how much rain can we see up to one to three inches before we're all finished up so again more flooding issues in places that definitely don't need any more rain at this point so a forecast for today lower 60s increasing clouds isolated rain showers can't be ruled out southeast wind up to five to ten miles per hour later on tonight 51 degrees rain showers move in late with that southeast wind up to five miles per hour. For tomorrow, lower 60s, rain likely also windy. Southeast wind up to 25 miles per hour. Scott's Recreation extended forecast for dry Wednesday and Thursday, mostly sunny. Temperatures in the middle to upper 50s. We're back in the middle 50s Friday with a partly cloudy sky. Thank you, Devin. A train is giving its passengers rides to a pumpkin patch, but it's making sure to take the scenic route. The Downey Scenic Railroad ended their season with their annual pumpkin train. Families climb aboard and were treated to an hour ride with a stop at a pumpkin patch. At the patch, each passenger is allowed to pick one pumpkin that they can then don decorate with stickers or carve when they get back home. We see people from all over the country. You know, definitely a lot of the folks close by, you know, southern Maine, come up, make a day trip out of it, come and uh, have a cup of chowda somewhere or a lobster roll and ride the train. We had folks from Oklahoma here today, so from all over. Gary Briggs, one of the conductors for the Downey Scenic Railroad, says that even though it was one of their last days of the season, it won't be long before they're up and running again, and he hopes to see everyone when they return. That is a really fun ride. It's a great way to see deer and osprey and eagles. It's just a great way to see all the wildlife. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon.